I'm in lockdown because I had to have a COVID test and that's why I'm recording from home and things are a little bit, might be a bit noisy. But that's, uh, I suppose, my destiny. It's part of why maybe I was reincarnated, which is really the theme of today's video. What is reincarnation and can we talk about it in under five minutes? And the answer is probably not, but I'll give it a shot. And if I don't do it justice, there are plenty of more developed and robust conversations on the Spirit Grow um, YouTube channel, which discuss reincarnation. But just a quick snapshot. And I'll start with the story of the Baal Shem Tov, who walked into a bar, sounds like the beginning of a joke, but 300 years ago, remember the old tavern, you know, the tavern downstairs and the rooms for board upstairs. So he walks in and he sees um, a person sitting at the bar and he says, Rebid. There was a soul that came into this world many times and could never achieve what its purpose was. And so eventually it came back as a stalk of grain and it happened to grow in a field nearby. And the farmer, when, they, when, he, when he harvested the field, he sold the grain in the local market to the local brewery who fermented it. And that soul has been poured into your cup. As you blow the froth off your beer, I want you to think about what it is that you're going to do next in order to help this soul finish its journey. And that's it. So what do I do? So the Bashamta said, if you make a bracha, if you make a blessing, and you intentionally elevate it, and then you use the energy from the beer to do something good, it will reach the end of its journey. So, so, so what is that? What does it mean the soul came down? Was it once a person? Was I once here? Were you once here? So it's a bit more complicated. There are a finite number of souls, and each of those souls will have many things to achieve, and in its journey will also have done things that were right and wrong, and wrong between people, and will therefore have to not only come back in order to finish achieving what its original destiny was, but also to fix any of its uh, uh, um, correct any of its errors, particularly the ones that relate to interpersonal offences. So a soul will split into many, many parts. And each of those parts can split further. And think about it as, uh, I don't know, um, radioactive energy or, or, or a fire. If you split a flame in half, you've got two flames now that can equally burn bright, hot, and create bushfires. They're, they're very, very powerful. The flames don't need to all be united in order to achieve something. Each flame, as you keep splitting it, has its own essence because it is the essence of fire. So the soul, when it splits, will split into many parts, which is how we come to topics like soulmateship and things like that. But if a soul comes multiple times and can't seem to overcome its itself, meaning it's within the body, it's within our psyche, it's within our consciousness, our emotions, but there is too much distraction and other elements of our animal soul don't allow for our, our, our um, true essence to actually uh, um, be explored and to, to influence the way we live, then the soul will have to come back in a manner, in a format, that it doesn't do something, but something is done to it. So it may come as an animal, it may come as a plant, an object. And there's a lot of uh, uh, debate within Kabbalah, how many times do you come back as a person before you come back as in, in another format? And some, and, and some will say three, and some will say multiple, until it can't be achieved as a human anymore. And then why we come back as an animal or a plant or, a, or an object is also debated. Uh, um, there's this uh, beautiful, cute idea. I uh, don't mean to call Kabbalistic teachings cute, but Reb Chaim Vital says that a person who speaks uh, ill of others their whole life, a person that's a rumor monger, will come back as a bumblebee. Because a bumblebee is constantly buzzing. But what is the life of a bumblebee? So it's, it's an interesting idea where he's explaining how our actions will define our future as well. But now that we understand this, that we come back in different formats, it doesn't mean you or I have ever been here before. Sure, part of our soul has been here before, but this is unique. You are unique and I'm unique. This is the first time I'm here. It's the first time this part of my soul 
is here in this format. But if we go back to the story of Baal Shem Tov, what's amazing is that with the complex creation of destiny, each one of us is exactly where we need to be in order to engage and interact with other souls in order to help one another finally complete our soul's journeys. So the way we converse, the way we connect with each other, the way we write to each other, the way we eat, the way we drive, the way we do anything is about engaging with souls, the soul that's within the car, the soul that's within our love, the soul that's within uh, our children, the soul that's within the food. All of those are meaningful opportunities uh, to engage and elevate each other so that the soul need not come back but ultimately can be reunited with the original soul group within the infinite state that is the Garden of Eden.